Was there too much guitar and not enough vocals, or was it pretty much balanced? You tell me. Balanced. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I just. I don't have. I don't have a loud voice, and I have asthma, so oh, okay. for me to play an unplugged show is very, very rare. Thanks for asking me to come, Bruce. Best I could do is this color green for a shirt, and I brought my. I have green shirt. And I brought I'm my green size. egg. <laughs> I'm gonna size. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Here I'm dying. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. I, I, I
We had a bit of a conversation about Roundup. She's just like you with it. She supports you with that. Okay, you're now available for the uh, piece. <laughs> okay, does even Roundup even work on fragments? Yes. In? It's one of the only things that does, which is unfortunate. Just a second, we're that just going to get fired. you in here. Your name is in that right, fire. Yep. Tell you that story. Lot of job. The only trouble is, is a lot of times its roots are in water. So you got to kind of drain it first, and then torch it. The patch that I showed her, you can see it on one side of the road, and then you can see it on the other. So it's okay, right you underneath. Turn your camera the other Where is way. it? It's uh, right by uh, Herbert's no, Expressway. Okay. No, 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 on the no, highway. The one you'd be so They're usually found on the <laughs> yeah, highway. They, they're salt okay, tolerant. Just hold on a second. Southern yeah. Ontario is now completely infested. It's out of control. Mm -hmm. so, it probably came on the tire. We just have to find something that eats it. Yeah. Good luck with that. Most into these things eventually yeah, fine. calm down. Yeah. Okay, we've got Elizabeth May about Now going live to you. Yeah. And yeah. go. Should I talk? Yes. Hi, I'm Bruce. Uh, I have uh, laryngitis. I won't be doing a lot of talking tonight. It's an occupational hazard of politicians. I think we're about to have a special guest, guest named Elizabeth. Now, which Elizabeth would that be? And here's Amanda. Amanda, over to you. Perfect. So, loud. Loud, 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 okay. loud. Um, thank you, everybody, we'll for coming you. very much. I would really like to thank everybody that's here with me tonight. Thank you so much for coming with me in my car. Um, everybody, this is a really wonderful turnout. I really appreciate it. I think we're going to have a whole lot of fun this evening. I'm excited for it. How about you guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah perfect. <laughs> Okay, and we're about to go with a, a greeting from Elizabeth May, the leader of the Green Party. Perfect. Is that Elizabeth coming in? Okay, and we're back to here. 
perfect. Thank you so much for joining us, Elizabeth. And I, I think it's really great that she took time out of her travels and actually right on transit was greeting us really quickly. Um, this is really wonderful. Attracting the 10,000 people, right of you, always wanted to say, Amanda. There's an awful lot that I love to talk about. Go for it. In particular, one of the things that I'm very grateful for is my time here in Thunder Bay. I've met a lot of really wonderful people. I've had a lot of really interesting <coughs> opportunities. And I was actually at Bombardier earlier today, and we were talking about a lot of the things that have been going on there. In particular, the layoffs and the need mm -hmm. for more long-term sustainable jobs in, in Thunder Bay. So we were really excited to be talking about things like expanding VIA um, for more buses, more trains, and things like that. And how do we get more of these long-term contacts to stay here as opposed to being just lost because there's no communication between the, the feds and the province? And how do we continue with this? So that was a big part of the conversations that we had today. Um, yeah. yeah, so... But now we're going to have fun. <laughs> All right. So who should we have first, Cheyenne or James Baraski? Who'd like to go up first? I think it is uh, Jordan and I. So Jordan and Cheyenne will be up in a minute. We have a green party, Thunder Bay, Northwestern Ontario, carbon-free house concert with Cheyenne and Jordan and James Baraski. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. I am always cold. Well, first I want to say it's an absolute pleasure to be here as an artist. Um, I know many of my fans have noticed that I've been, I took a big step back. Part of the reason I took a big step back is, and this is um, nothing against any musicians out there, but... When you're a touring musician, there is a lot of carbon footprint. Um, and as an environmentalist, I felt almost like I was going against what I was practice against what I was preaching through my practice of being a musician and touring, um, ticket sales, every venue, there's pop cans and straws and paper cups. So I made the choice of quitting being a musician with that being the main reason why. However, me being a musician as an artist, we're like, I got to keep singing, I got to keep writing, I got to keep um, putting it out there. So I said to Bruce, why don't we do a carbon free show? Then I can do this show. I can do a show with friends, get other artists in. You guys can all watch from your homes. Um, we can be here and sing for you. And I don't have to worry about all the things that bother me about, about being that touring artist. So... Uh, if that is something you're passionate about too, I hope you enjoy what we have to say. And I'm um, proud to say that I am a green supporter so much that I'm wearing two pins. <laughs> Maybe I should make a vest of pins. <laughs> All right, and this is Jordan. Um, Jordan is my guitar player tonight, but he is also a producer, an engineer, a guitar teacher, a touring artist. Um, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> An artist, a performing, a performing artist. Um, and we've been working together on many different projects for probably close to a decade now. Mm. And uh, he's like family to me. So our first song is... <coughs> Whatever you feel. I'm going to do Birch Cedar Spruce. I know it's not a rocking tune, but I think it sets the tone for what green means to me. Um, outside of voting green, of course. Uh, so Birch Cedar Spruce, this song is about these three trees that I saw on on my property way out by the Black Sturgeon River and it's a birch tree, a spruce tree and a cedar tree and they are all growing together out of the same stump or it looks like they're coming out of the same stump. Now if you know anything about trees, which I know Bruce would, usually trees compete against each other and the dominant species will take over and the other ones will pass on. But in this case these three trees have all survived, all of them as big as my arm um, they flourished and they grew together supporting each other and to me I thought that was amazing so I thought that was kind of like communities as communities were very diverse and we can either make the choice of competing with each other or working together to make something beautiful so that's what this song is about mm -hmm. so gently by the creator's hand leaning on 
on each other as we need to do, grounded by their interwoven tangled roots. Crunch, see the roots And they will bow to the winds of change, yet they still remain together, though their branches all may fade. Isn't that like me and you? Crunch, cedar and spruce. We all may be different, but we're all the same. Every seed sown from a common grain. Leaning on each other as we need to do, grounded by our interwoven tangled roots. just came up with a really cool last line. Birch, cedar, and brew. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't dawn on me until the very last line. Like it's birch, cedar, yeah. and Bruce. Bruce. Now you have to do yeah. it about Amanda. <laughs> Amanda. Okay, I'm going to have to click, click on my feet on there. Okay. Is she not a Boston fan? Yes. No. I'm not a sports fan at all. No, she wants a band. Oh, the band. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it went right over my head that time. I apologize. That's good. I was named after the Boston song. Oh, nice. very cool. So you are musically <laughs> derived. A touched. Yes. So our next song is, I'm actually going to go into my fourth album. So that, that song you just heard was on my third album. And that song actually was written by myself and my friend Va Jerry Vandiver, who is a very good friend of Bruce. Um, and Jerry Vandiver is a songwriter out of Nashville. So Birch Cedar Spruce was not just me. It was myself and Jerry who wrote that song. And he felt very moved by those three trees too. So this song is Bones. Um, and when I was writing this song, as an Indigenous person, um, we all know that with the TRC we have the recommendations <coughs> going on. Uh, but when I was writing this song, I was thinking, like, if we're going to move forward, we have to unpack a little bit of history, fix it at <coughs> the base, and then <coughs> move forward as a collective. Uh, and I do know that the Green Party does have a very strong Indigenous focus uh, in their platform, which I, as an Indigenous person, am very happy about. So um, that's what this song is about. It's, it's uh, really fixing what's wrong, not just putting a Band-Aid on it, but let's dig it up and figure it out and then move forward as a community. Make a deal with the devil Tomorrow when I rise I'm gonna break all these ties Sitting there picking up bones What can be found, boys? What can be found? Buried deep in the ground Secrets of the past That were once a case Sitting there picking up bones Picking up bones Bones Hey, hey, hey. 
days. I'm glad I found what was buried in the ground when I was sitting there picking up bones, picking up bones, bones, picking up bones. You saved my soul Cause I was sitting there Picking up bones Picking up bones Picking up bones Picking up bones Thanks for the shaker. Oh. Come on, baby, let my fire. <laughs> All right. So I think we have next on our list. I don't even remember. Uh, was it There was one voice. Yeah, we'll do that one at the end. We'll do one voice at the end. So those of you who have been following me, if you're one of my fans, um, and you had seen all my bazillion posts and shares about the one voice, we're actually doing it live tonight. Uh, we don't have all 115 voices. No. Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, unless all of you guys want, and it's like one fifth of the voices. That was, a, <laughs> that was an amazing video. Thank you very yeah, much. Just Thank great. You. But I do have three of the singers that were part of the song with me tonight, so we are going to do a very scaled down version of it uh, later. There is glue in oh, the Oh, the glue. Sunshine. Yes, of course. How did I forget the glue? Okay, so the glue. This song was inspired <coughs> not by nature, but by a pair of dirty socks. <laughs> yeah, funny enough. And they were my husband's dirty, dirty socks. Um, we weren't husband and wife at the time, but I tripped on his socks in the middle of the night and fell down and banged my head, and I was not happy. <laughs> so we kind of got into a little like ee -ee about it. Um, and in the morning, I had to go off on tour, and he was going up north. I don't tour anymore. That was before I changed my mind about that. Um, so I decided, like, even after we said sorry, like things aren't really clear. The air isn't clear yet. I'm going to write him a quick little song. So I literally took 10 minutes to write this quick little song that was inspired by these dirty socks. And uh, he really liked it, which he should, because I wrote it for him. Um, and he told me when Jerry came up, when you go down to Nashville, you should really record that song. So I was like, eh, it's kind of, it's a 10 minute song about socks, but not about <laughs> socks. But anyway, so I went down to Nashville, we recorded it, they really liked it, it ended up winning Single of the Year at the Indigenous Music Awards, so, you know, now I'm hoping he leaves his underwear laying around. <laughs> but truth be said, like, the glue, if you listen to the lyrics, a lot of it is nature-based, because when Ben, who's my husband, um, when we go out to do things, what really drives our passion is the outdoors. So uh, I love, we love canoeing, we love hiking, we love being in the bush, we love being in nature. I am a very avid gardener. I grow all my own food. Um, so we, we do walk the walk and talk the talk. Um, and so when you listen to the song, you'll kind of hear elements of that. And that's why I wanted to sing it tonight because it does show like, you know, a life in nature is a beautiful one. There's a prop behind you, can you get up? Oh yes, for the paddle part. Sure. Can I borrow your paddle sure. part? Another day on this crazy road Times I guess we both don't know Where this little love is going Times it isn't showing anything at all And love can be like learning how Take two steps forward and I'll take two back And stumble on each other Maybe even smother this gracefulness Oh, I don't know why But I guess I'm 
sometimes you gotta try. No, I don't know why, but I guess what makes us stronger through the years are the tears and the I'll grab the paddle, you can grab the canoe. <laughs> Do what we love and it becomes the glue that holds us together. And I made an effort to be in your arms. We may not know what's coming round the bend. We paddle slowly and for sure we can make it through the rapids that come so quickly at us. We smile when You gotta cry. Don't know why, but I guess what makes us stronger through the years are the tears and the fears. And we breathe. I'll grab the paddle, you can grab the canoe. We do what we love and it becomes the glue. Yeah. A nice love song about marriage. Yes. Laughter, love, tears, and the joy of socks. <laughs> yes! Well, I didn't enjoy them too much when I hit my head, but, you know, I don't mind them now. I let them leave them lay around. And you know what? I heard Bruce singing harmonies in there. I did True. not know that one of Bruce's other really cool attributes is he sings. That's really cool. Do you play guitar, too? Saxophone. Oh, I knew that! Yes, that's right. Hard to sing and play the saxophone at the same time. So both our green candidates have some kind of musical element in them. Isn't that kind of cool? Harmonizing with laryngitis even. Yeah, with, now that's talent. <laughs> I should give my award to you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, I thought you were telling me something. Sorry. As I deer in the head, like, looking what? <laughs> um... I'm not sure who's all online, but I sure hope you're enjoying the show. We just got uh, one more solo piece, and then I'm going to bring up some friends. And actually, we probably don't have time for that other solo piece. Are we sure. like? We have lots of time. Yeah. yeah. All the time. Are you all time the world. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, as long as the video keeps going, right? Is, yes, it, is it still working? That's still up. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Um, so I'm going to do one that I need lyrics for because we've actually only ever sang this together twice ever. That means no rehearsals either, but I really like it, so I'm going to sing it anyway. Just dive right off the edge. Just yeah, well, you know me. Well, if a musician is a good musician, they can just, like, whip it out, right? Exactly. So, but I am a huge fan of Leonard Cohen. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. Oh, or should we do The Pines instead? Hallelujah or The Pines by... Uh, Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. could all sing along. We can sing yeah, I think oh. everyone can sing along. And all the people online too, can you sing with us? And you just Google search, you can find the six very long verses. It's almost like which six verses? They're about 50. Sure. Well, I'm going to go with these seven verses. All I right. did my best, it wasn't much. That typifies Leonard Cohen's work. No, I'm just going to do the six verses. 
because I didn't even realize there was a seventh one until this very second. <laughs> <laughs> so six years.
everybody, but entertaining, you guys. That almost brought a tear to my eye. That was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Unplugged acoustic, real voices, real harmony. Thank you, guys. You're welcome on any of my shows, <laughs> which are going to be primarily environmental, emission-free, carbon-free. Okay. Diane, Lisa Lacko is watching you right now. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for the shout-out today on the One Voice video. We're going to do One Voice live, just not with all 115 people. <laughs> Voices. And you know what? There was actually close to 200 people involved in the project, when you think about all the studios and that. Yeah, it's crazy. Are we on to our last one now? Yes. Okay. So, if anybody knows me as a performer, I like to drag like 50 kids with me wherever I go to sing along with me. I don't know why, it's just what I do. And um, actually, I do know why. It's, I think that kids, sorry, you're not a kid anymore, Taylor, you're a teenager. But younger people need that mentorship. And it de depends on who's mentoring them. That's the traits that they're going to pick up as artists and performers. Um, and I'm a strong believer that as a performer, you can have a positive message. You can be strong in who you are and not have to change into something else, into some brand. Um, you don't have to sell out. You can be the musician you were born to be without all that extra stuff that, you, that isn't who you are. So that's why I like to bring youth in. Um, and when I'm doing songs that I think are empowering or, or messages that need to be heard, uh, and I find kids and teenagers, younger people, um, who have like-minded thoughts, I like to bring them in and say, like, you know what, if you think, you know, we're, I'm an adult and you're youth, but we can still have the same thoughts. And when we put our thoughts together and we put our, our, our power together, that's when change is happening. So it's not just one generation, it's multi-generational. So um, on this song, One Voice, on the actual recording and the one on YouTube, I'm going to do a little spin out for myself here, if that's okay, Bruce. Okay, um, on YouTube, if you Google One Voice, not now, not till after the show, One Voice, Cheyenne and Friends, you'll see the video, and it is a green carbon free video and song. Uh, we have 115 people from around the world, but nobody traveled to Thunder Bay to get it done. They all sent their stuff in digitally if they weren't in the area, and video was also sent the same way. And Jordan had the lovely task of editing all 115 voices together and making sure every line, line, word lined up, every ending, every start of every word, with all 115 voices. And Damien uh, with Epica Pictures, uh, with his uh, editor assistant Chad, I think it was Chad, had the lovely task of taking any footage that came in, um, regardless what quality, and had to make a fantastic video out of whatever they got. And they both did wonderful. Uh, and the thing with the video is, is that we were not supposed to have anything man-made in it. Um, the kids from Colombia, there's a bit of a bridge in two of them, but I'll forgive them for that because my goodness, they were so cute. Um, <laughs> but everything else, it was supposed to show uh, various parts of the world in its natural environment and show the beauty of what we are trying to protect here. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to invite three of the 115 singers up with us. I have... Taylor Belial. Yay. Her baby sister Chloe Belial. Yay. And now how do two lovely girls from the same family get such great voices? Well they get it from their mother. So we're gonna invite Jen Belial, their mom. This is quite warm, so try not to get too, too, too hot. Do you want to switch? Uh, I could, yeah. Can we switch? Because he's a lefty. Yeah. Just don't mind the guitar. Okay. Okay. And you guys can just scooch, scooch, scooch. There, that's better. Can I take this chair? You know, well, yeah, you can take whatever chair you want. Why don't you swap chairs and make it easy on yourself? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be rocking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fall it off the chair. Oh. And Jordan wow. did help write the second verse. <coughs> Just he always leaves himself out of that part, so he's actually instrumental in the entire rocking song. Rocking chairs aren't meant for this kind of rocking. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> I can make it work. I can do it. You guys are good. Yep. Okay. Well, so. we'll see how this goes. <laughs> yeah. Try to remember. How does the song go? I wanna ride. Okay. Two, three. I wanna ride.
song that brings hope and change and peace to everyone. I want to be the change that we need. These choices we're making, the future is changing now. I have small hands. I have small feet. How can I do any change at all? Oh, if I stand tall, if I stand strong, maybe someone will join in my song.
fabulous. Are they pretty good for some children? Okay, so I just want to point out there that making a choice and making a change are uh, when, when we're talking voting, okay, thank you, and thank you to Jordan. Anytime. Thank you, Jordan. Anytime. Um, when when real, real change happens and when we make the right choice. So I'm not telling anybody if they should vote this way or that way. I know I'm voting for Green because I believe that that's the right choice for not just me, but the future of the children that I work with on many different levels. So uh, make your choice educated. Get out there, really read the platforms. Don't make it a strategic vote. Vote for who you really feel should be in the lead. And in my opinion, <laughs> I've already put my vote in early and it is green because I believe that's where change is gonna happen. So can we get the kids to sing their, each one of their songs and then we're gonna give it up to James? Okay. So I'm gonna let Taylor and Chloe, because they got drowned out by me, they're gonna each do a little solo of their own because right. they're fabulous. And then we're gonna bring up the blues guru, uh, Mr. James. So Chloe, no, Taylor. <laughs> they're sisters, I get them mixed up. <laughs> and you'll have to introduce yourself and introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Taylor Bilal, and I'm going to be doing All of Me by John Legend karaoke version. And I actually have some background of music, too. I've been performing for, doing solos for a long time. I've been doing shows in Red Rock and stuff, and I love music, and it's always going to be my favorite. <coughs> Let's see if technology keeps working. Yeah. Is it gonna work there? Maybe you did it. I don't know how your phone works. <laughs> you have the same phone as me. Yeah, but you have everything different on your phone? Typical grown-ups, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how it works. I can I can work mine, but not hers. It's, 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 it's really interesting how technology can make things a lot more difficult when oh, it's supposed to make it easier. Yeah. How, how, how long have they been on phones for now? When she was 12, she got one. Okay. She doesn't quite have a phone yet mm. until she's 12. Oh, she I'm has getting, an iPod. I'm getting one. I have a phone and an iPod, but it doesn't have that. Yeah. Now, now, do you put apps on it so that you can make calls? or? Mm, I can't, can't really make calls. It's just like Because we have all Apple products, yeah. we can talk keep in contact with each other. Yeah, absolutely. But so, what, what's your favorite part of technology? Is it mm, gone? Probably oh, the my games, phone update. or YouTube, oh. or different Oh no! Things. I'm <laughs> updating! <laughs> Chloe, do you want to go? Do you have, while you get, while she finds Actually, her? go get your uh -huh. iPod, because it should be on the iPod. Perfect. So a little interview. So, so well, maybe, do you want to, Amanda, can we get Amanda to come yeah. up there? You know what, actually, I, I'd, I'd like to tell you a little something. When I was uh, about 15 years old, I was a, a theater technician. And uh, one of the artists I actually got to work with was Susan Aglikirk. Are you familiar with Susan Aglikirk? Yes, I know Susan. Mm -hmm. well. That's yeah. fantastic. One of the most important things that I learned working with and for her was about relationships. So she taught me an awful lot about respect, and she was always so kind. It was always really nice to see that uh, also come across in your music as well. So I was also really glad to see that come across with your music tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you. Aww. Nice to be compared to Susan and Clark. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your favorite part of getting into music? Um, the first, my first recollection of music is sitting on the couch when I was three years old and I couldn't speak Ojibwe or English very well, so I was making up gibberish and my gookum came in and said, what's she singing? And everyone's like, I don't know. <laughs> so I just sat there and sang gibberish and I just uh, loved it right from then. And the first song I wrote was on a Fisher Price piano when I was about seven years old and it was about elephants flying. The song did not fly, but you know, that's where my songwriting kind of. I think I had the same piano. Yeah, the little tiny <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you guys uh, ready here? Do you need a couple more minutes? Or? Um, no. No? I already have it. Okay, Perfect. so we're going to switch sisters. Hey, Taylor, you go. Oh, no, we're not switching sisters. <laughs> no. She really wants her sister to go okay. first. Taylor, you ready? We got the tunes, yeah. we got the Bluetooth, we got it all. Make sure you're one second. Come on. 
needs to be heard um, and every opportunity needs to be given to be heard on so. many different levels yes. and she has Cheyenne to thank for her voice because wow. Cheyenne has helped her in so many ways <laughs> yeah she already had it <laughs> <laughs> oh. perfect oh now that's a good idea <laughs> All right, so our next artist is going to be Taylor's little sister, who is also extremely talented, and you're in grade four, five. 
grade five. She's growing up before my eyes. I remember her in grade two. Come on up, Chloe. And what are you singing? Um, and above water. Did you forget already? Yes. <laughs> Something that I know, Mom, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right. Well. But uh, James Boraski mm -hmm. is here in Thunder Bay now, and he has been for a while. And he's a jazz and blues and his own stuff on top of it. I've enjoyed him for years, and we're so pleased he's joining us here tonight on the Green Party Thunder Bay Turban Free Fun Evening with Bruce and Amanda. Mother tongue. 
Share it with your friends and the more the merrier tonight. James, are you ready to go? You bet. All right. Thanks very much. I have to say that I've been uh, an environmental supporter for a long time, and I'm really honored to be here for Bruce and Amanda tonight, and, and grateful for Cheyenne uh, to, for extending the invitation. A lot of this that I see in your, in your living room here, Bruce, is really what I grew up with. My dad was an avid outdoorsman. I spent uh, a lot of my youth in Algonquin Park recognizing untouched beauty, or lightly touched beauty, but paddles, canoes, my dad taught me a lot about hunting and uh, ethical harvesting, conservation, and I'm very, very cool. I like, I like the Green Party moose, because as an avid moose hunter, this has one, been one of the biggest environmental impacts that I personally have seen over the years, particularly in the Thunder Bay area. Same thing, I'm gonna sing you a song tonight off my 10-year-old CD this year called the Beaufort Delta Blues, and it's a bit of a paradox, and it's. Uh, a song about the Mackenzie Gas Pipeline project that was one of Canada's biggest projects drawing carbons and hydrocarbons out of the Beaufort Sea and trying to bring it down to the pipeline for distribution across Canada. Luckily that project never proceeded and the paradox was that animals like, like the caribou were severely impacted by the pipeline that would have been established going right from the Beaufort Sea down to through the Mackenzie Valley, the Richardson Mountains and, uh, and down to the Alberta border. So Bruce, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here and uh, to think about the moose, the paddles, and the environment that I grew up in as a kid with my dad. So although I do a lot of blues, I'm going to sing ballads and blues for you tonight and uh, give it a little bit of a mix-up. This is a song called Without Reason that was off my first CD, the Never Too Late CD. And this is really the song that launched my, my music career around the world. It was the song that was picked up by the most radio stations and, and I appreciated uh, all the support that I've had for it locally and abroad.
And for that reason, you walk across the floor and through the crowd, girl, I see only you. You touch my hand and whisper softly, you smile and steal my heart. Maybe my love always will be true. You touch my hand and whisper softly, you smile and steal my heart. Yeah, baby, my love always will be true. Kind of like Taylor's song, upbeat love song. Exactly. Well, and I'm going to play stuff that I've played for for many many years, and I'm I'm playing songs that uh, some of my own. That was one of my original songs. This next song is by one of my favorite Canadian songwriters, uh, Jim Cuddy from Blue Rodeo. Oh yeah. And uh, Jim Cuddy and uh, has written a lot of songs about his travels across Canada, the impacts that he's seen. Uh, the impact of environmental communities and, and Aboriginal communities, and uh, a real inspiration. And so I, uh, I adopted this song. It was a song that he wrote for his wife, Rena, but uh, I didn't have a wife named Rena, so I, I called it Come Out With Me Tonight. And it is uh, a bit of an exemplification of my travels across Canada. I worked for the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans, and so I've had a uh, 40 plus year career of working uh, in natural resources and environmental protection. So uh, this song, it, it really, really struck me about all the miles across Canada and all the different environments that you see and the impacts as you as you travel across this great country of ours. And so I applaud the, uh, the Green Party for the platform that it's put forward in terms of protecting a lot of those natural spaces and trying to make sure that uh, our impacts to the existing uh, environment that we have are minimized as much as possible. I said my plans with trembling hands I knew just what to do Follow each step carefully
with tonight Yeah, baby, please come out with me tonight Yeah, baby, please come out with me Thank you very much. Well, I was wondering if I could ask Dr. Clausen for a favor. Dr. Awesome? Dr. Awesome? Yeah, Dr. Awesome. That little green egg that's on the uh, piano there beside you, would you toss it my way? Softly. So this is the, uh, the green party egg, right? <laughs> I know that you're keeping well, really? a lot of great percussion I'm, I'm over in, there. Could I, yeah. could I ask you the favor? I'm on, I'm on it. All right. <laughs> we'll attach into the balance of power. <laughs> <laughs> well, this next song is uh, a song by a very, very good friend of mine, one of Canada's most prolific blues artists, Jack DeKaiser. And uh, Jack is a good friend of mine, and he uh, co-produced my last album with me, uh, the Coming Home album, and it was the album I released when I came back to Thunder Bay. It went number six in Canada back in 2013 in the Roots and Rock Blues albums of the year. And this is one of Jack's songs off an album that he released that same year off his Electric Love album. It's a song called Good Thing. And I believe that uh, the environment that, that we get to you know, protect and enjoy is a very good thing. So although a lot of these songs tonight are about people, they can easily be applied to Mother Earth and, and the environment that surrounds us. I didn't want to point you in, not play blues. Beyond every dark cloud, they say that there's a silver lining, but it was raining, baby. Sometimes I thought I'd never find you. They said that the darkest hour is always just before the dawn. Waited in the dark Until it seemed the light would never come I found you, I found out What it's all about You know good things Good things come to those who wait And I hope that's your case You're the good thing That I've been waiting for You're the good thing Thank you. 
Yes, you are. You're the good thing. The good thing. Well, I said at the outset that I was going to yes. sing a little paradox song. So when I was living up in uh, in Nuvik on the Beaufort Sea coast, about as far north as you could drive at the time, Diefen, at the end of Diefenbaker's Dream, The Road to Resources, I wrote a song uh, because of the project that I was working on, and it was called the Beaufort Delta Blues. And the reason I called it the Beaufort Delta Blues was it was a real struggle. Uh, in the communities up there when the Mackenzie Gas Pipeline project was proposed. And uh, on one hand, you had a lot of the elders who lived off the land. And as you can see, I'm sure this may not represent the Northwest Territories, but it certainly looks just ex like, exactly like that. It's the barren lands. There's not a lot there. And the caribou was one of the, the largest food resources. And the concern was the impacts of the pipeline affecting caribou migration routes. The other aspect was when I first moved up there in 2004, I took a look at some aerial photographs, and one of the most striking things that I saw was the advance of the tree line above the Arctic Circle. And it had actually advanced about 15 kilometers from where it was in the 70s. What's creating that? Obviously global warming and climate change, and the tree line moving farther and farther north and impacting habitats that were you know, critical and, and vital. So I, I know we have challenges here in Thunder Bay and in your riding. But I think the challenges that we face as, as a population and uh, as people in Canada is far reaching from coast to coast to coast. And uh, so my paradox song kind of is a little bit of a play on what was happening environmentally up there, the struggles between uh, the community people, the elders who depended on whales and caribou and berries and, and, and a lot of natural harvesting, and then the younger people in the communities that really wanted to, to see what a wage-based economy could bring. But something like a pipeline is very short-term wage-based economy, as we all know. You create it, once it starts producing and, and moving the hydrocarbons, uh, it's not a whole lot of maintenance work and, and not a lot of sustainable long-term jobs. So that was part of the paradox for me, was watching the people in the communities as we went through the review of the project. Uh, and you have the elders speaking, and then you have the younger Aboriginal folks who were uh, talking about wanting a wage-based economy. The other thing was, I had never been to the Arctic before, and it's certainly not above the Arctic Circle, and when I was leaving here as a district manager for fisheries oceans to go up there, people said, oh, you're going to love it, James. It's the land of the midnight sun, and by golly, it is in the summertime. <laughs> but nobody ever tells you about that seven weeks of winter when you're above the Arctic Circle that you don't see the sun for seven weeks. But when it comes back mid-January, you get 11 minutes of sunrise and sunset and a little sliver on the sky and the town goes crazy and they do all their fireworks that they would normally do in, uh, in July for Canada Day because you can't do them then. It's 24 hours of daylight. So uh, I had a little bit of fun with this song. So hopefully you'll get some of the cliches out of it. Uh, the catchphrase at the end of the song is, will you say hello or goodbye to all your Beaufort Delta Blues? <laughs> In the summertime, we got the midnight sun. In the summertime, we're in the land of the midnight sun. You got 24 hours to go out and have some fun. But in the winter time, we got the noontime moon. In the winter time, you're in the land of the noontime moon It gets so darn cold You can turn ten shades of Out in circle blue Lots of gas And if we get the pipe 
pots of oil and gas and companies will have lots and lots of cash. And with global warming, you got it, there'll be no more freezing off your... G-rated version. Sing, uh, I'm going to sing you a couple more songs if that's okay. This, uh, this next song is a tune that um, it's not environmentally based at all, it was just a play on words. And we all know those they say sayings the, the people that are way smarter than us and they tell us all the things that we should and shouldn't do. Well, one day I was sitting at home and whether I was listening to the radio or just life was happening around me, but I was getting inundated by all these they say sayings. So I decided to Google they say sayings. And there's 38 plus pages of they say sayings, so it was very easy to write a song. You pick the ones that appeal to you, find a rhyming one, and, and then come up with a catchphrase. So this is uh, a song that I probably could have sold a, a couple hundred times over if I had it recorded, and actually I'm working on a new album now, and so it will be one of the feature tracks. Well, they say absence makes a heart grow fonder. You've heard that, right? And they say the what don't kill you might make you stronger. Well, I want to know just who the heck are they? Well, they say the good times go too fast, that's what they say. And they say to live each day like it's your last, that's what they say. Yeah, I want to know just who the heck are they? Well, they say the grass is greener on the other side. They say the pain is something you can't hide. And they say that only the good die young You can't be a father till you've been a son Well, they say the nice guys finish lives That's what they say And they say you gotta stop living in the past Well, Green, that's what they say I wanna know just who the heck are they How long for me? I love doing house concerts for this very reason. They say, don't mix business with your pleasure. My favorite. And they say, one man's junk is another man's treasure. 
Tune one string. <laughs> well, my, one of my favorite songwriters is J.J. Kale, and uh, I had the, the great pleasure of recording one of his songs on my last album, and this is a song that has always struck me as a, as a gentleman. It's about a, it's a song about treating a lady right, and uh, not taking things for granted, and when I was asked by, uh, by Bruce and Cheyenne to do the show, I was trying to find songs that are in my repertoire that could have a very strong environmental meaning. And this is, this is one of those songs that, if we think of the, the woman that JJ wrote this song for as Mother Earth, and how sensitive Mother Earth is, um, I just want you to all go away tonight with this last song and, uh, and apply the messages that you hear in the song to the impacts that you have on our natural environment and uh, I really can't say anything more about it except I love this song. I just do want to say thanks to Bruce and Amanda for inviting me to be here and, and Cheyenne and thanks everyone who came out to support uh, the Green Party and obviously thanks to the crew who are, who are recording and, and broadcasting this to our friends who are able to curl up by their fireplace I hope at home and, and, and enjoy the music that Cheyenne and her guests uh, prepared for you tonight and, and I hope that you've enjoyed my portion as well. Treat you right 
And if you believe Well I don't find There ain't nothing like The sense of time She's so lonely She's waiting for you And you You are the only Party who can help her through Don't take her for granted Cause she's had a hard time Yeah, you got to know That she's a sensitive kind song is Who Told You. Yeah, okay. I, and, and his album, James' last album is amazing. I invite everybody to go out and uh, check it out. Coming home. It's... And I've got an amazing special on. If if I could take a moment to uh, toot my own horn here a little bit. My first album, Never Too Late, I recorded when I was 50 years old. I single parented and my primary, uh, you asked Cheyenne how she came to music. and. Uh, I started playing the guitar when I was 10 years old. I'm self-taught, so I don't know all the slick tricks that uh, a lot of other guitarists do, but uh, nonetheless, I've always enjoyed it, and I, and I always wrote. But when I was raising my kids, uh, the priority was figure skating and hockey arenas and, and getting them to enjoy uh, a lot of the life that I had had an opportunity to enjoy. So the guitar was always there, but it always came out at night when the kids were sleeping. and. Um, I guess fast forward to my kids left home in 2004, I decided it was time for a big adventure. The government asked me if I wanted to go up and live in the Northwest Territories and I thought, how great an adventure could that be? I'm not going to mess up anybody's life but my own. And it was no mess up at all, it was really an incredible experience. Um, but I started playing at uh, the end of the Road Music Festival in 2004, it was the very first festival and they had a two-hour spot for local artists to get up on stage and so I went into the green room to play a, a Bob Seger song and this guy with a saxophone walked in, not you, but uh, a fellow walked in, he goes, oh, he says, I know that song, and he says, I know the, the intro lick on it, and I says, oh, that's great, and he says, do you want me to play with you? And I said, yes, that would be lovely, and he says, after we got through a few bars, he says, well, I know a, a drummer and a guitar player and a bass player, he says, would you like a band? And I figured it's two songs, what could possibly go wrong? And uh, one of the things that my son had often said to me was, uh, Dad, your life is like 
it changes minute by minute. It is truly a momentary evolution. And that kind of <laughs> stuck with me. And that's how the band name came to be, because I was going to go on stage as a solo. The next thing I know, I had a six-piece <clears throat> band, and Momentary Evolution was formed in 2004. Wow. Now, to disappoint you, if I could, <laughs> that song doesn't get any justice if there's not, like, saxophone and harmonica and all the other blues instruments. So can I, can, can I say reserve that one for okay. the next Green yeah. Party house party and I'll sure. bring an accompanist with me? Sure. And then I could do that song justice for you. But okay. thank you for asking for it. How about if I play you another song that's sort of along the same lines. It's a little bit of a fun song. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of environmental. Um, when I moved down from the Northwest Territories in the fall of 2011, the next spring was beautiful. I had bought a house and I was... Uh, Basically, I'd stripped it down to the cement floor and I was redoing the whole house from the inside out. And uh, that March, my birthday's on March 17th, so I do have a green tie, Bruce. St. Patrick's Day. And uh, none, nonetheless, uh, in March that year, 2012, it was really warm here. And I was outside in shorts and, and a little t-shirt. But the next winter, the winter of 2013, what the heck happened here? It was one of the worst winters on record. And in May, when snow was still falling, I was lamenting. So I wrote a song about the long, cold winter blues. Because in the Northwest Territories, you endure nine months of winter. Down here, not quite as long. But uh, how about if I play this one for you? I, I actually, I debuted this song down in Memphis, Tennessee. I got selected to represent Thunder Bay at the International Blues Challenge in Memphis back in... 2015 and uh, I wrote this song and, and I think it'll be just a fun song to end off with if that's okay with you and thanks for letting me tell the story so this is the long cold winter blues I have not bad yeah it's true I have these long cold winter blues Straight is true. The long cold winter blues. Snow was everywhere, that's the truth. I had a long cold winter blues. Let me take you back. Time on my truck, well, they just spin. My treads were digging in. Time on my truck, well, they just spin. No, no, the treads were digging in. Snow was everywhere, that's the truth. Then I had Blues. Well, there was places that I wanted to go and see, but I couldn't get to there because the snow just kept on piling up. I could stand the temperature. I had a bad yeah, it's true. I had the long cold thunder big blues. It just isn't fair that much is true. I want to send all this snow to you. Cause it for Kleenex when I caught the flu Achoo! A long cold winter blues Shake your soul up That's all I got That's all you got <laughs> That's all I feel like on the guitar tonight That's all I got <laughs> Yeah, there were places that I wanted to go and see But I couldn't get to there Because the snow just kept on piling up I couldn't stand the temperature I had a bad, yeah, it's true I had these long folk gonna be blue It's April now, but I ain't no fool The snow keeps falling and I get blue Send me an address that I can use Down in Memphis I'll send all this snow to you I'm sending all this snow, I'm sending all this snow to you. Man, I hate these winter blues. <laughs> Woo!
once again, thank you so much for having me and asking for me to be a part. Don't go away. Don't run. Okay. Come on out. Cheyenne, everybody. Bruce, Amanda, Steve. And how about the people behind the scenes? There's not any more room. We have people. We have people from all across Canada joining us tonight. Our carbon-free house council. Thank you so much, Taylor, Chloe, Cheyenne, James, Amanda, Mom. Everybody. <laughs> James Murray with Newsnet Ledger for coming. Yes. And Casey. Yes, yes. And Casey, the other tech guy, Mr. Slick. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And of course, Neil, who does a lot of work for Bruce in the background. And then we have Ingrid from Toronto, right? Um, I, you can't see her. But she's right there. <laughs> Stand Just up. Stick your hand out there. Come and go, on, Ingrid. Yeah. Come on, Ingrid. Hey. Our favorite canvas here. Yeah. And do we want our other two friends to come up? Please. Yes. 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 Vince Hi, from Vince. Burlington. Hey. Kelsey. Hey. <laughs> and the last word goes, because my voice is shot with this laryngitis, to Amanda. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming out. It's been an incredible campaign this far. We've only got a few more days to go. No matter what you do, go out and vote. Whoever you're voting for, make sure you show their, your support for them. As Cheyenne was saying, don't vote strategically. Vote with your heart and vote with your conscience, 100%. But whatever you do, vote. Thank you so much. And yeah. to our two candidates in this area, Northwestern Ontario, Amanda and Bruce, I'd like to say a thank you for hosting this. It's been a pleasure and an honor to be here with everybody, everybody out there and everybody in here. Um, and I think we've all greatly enjoyed ourselves. I think this is the first time James and I have shared a stage. Yeah. Actually, the first time that I came oh. to town. No, 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 no. Okay. It is the first time we've okay. shared a stage. I don't know whether you remember, but one time during uh, a competition called Thunder Bay Scott Talent, you got to judge me over at the Foundry oh, one that's time. Right. That's how that's we met. Right. That's how we that's met. That's right. Yeah. I, I do remember that. Yeah. Anyways, me Gwich. Uh, in my language, we say Bana Maminoa Guab Min, which means see you again later. We never say goodbye. That's final. Um, and we will see each other on our path. So if anybody else has anything to say, I don't want to be the final word. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. See you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Meet twins. Woo! How's that? All right. Wonderful. Oh, and I can still get home in time to put Rexy to bed. <laughs> <laughs>